Welcome back to Marseille. Uh, this is my home for the next few days. Well, I'll reveal over the videos coming up uh, why and how I am here, but that's the Marseille Harbour just down there. I'm on the beach and I want to talk about the quarterfinals and this one in particular, the host nation France against South Africa, the final game of the weekend. Possibly the one I'm most excited about because I think it's maybe the hardest to call. And more than that, this game between France and South Africa is, for both nations, the culmination of years and years of work. Because South Africa are the champions, it's, it's easy to kind of forget that when Razi Erasmus took over in 2018, his eyes, yes, they were going to do as well as they could in the World Cup, and they did all right. But his eyes were on this World Cup. There was the Lions in 21, there was the World Cup in 23. And I think South Africa just got to where they got to in 2019 faster than even they imagined they would. But the, the plan for South Africa was to, to, to build the depth of the squad, to implement a game plan that could do well in the short term, but to evolve that in the longer term. And Razi Rasmus has obviously exceeded expectations up to now, but I think this was where the focus was. And, you know, even during this World Cup campaign, they've been trialling things, the 7-1 split against Ireland, various combinations in the build-up. This is what it's all been about for South Africa. As soon as they beat Scotland, I think in a way the pressure was kind of off. They could try things against Ireland. I think they'll be better if they do face Ireland again in a final. This game would have been the focus and they knew they were either going to be facing France or New Zealand. And the second that they lost to Ireland, I think they were, they were thinking, right, all the focus on France and, and this is it. This, this is when it, all those plans, all those hours, come to fruition and the same for France you know home world cup this would have been on the radar for a long long time and this is the culmination of a lot of work into the French system the domestic leagues they've been building and building and they've been expanding the number of prof uh, professional teams and professional leagues the under 20s have had successive world champion teams um, and a lot of work going in at the, at, the, at the youth level, coach development, player development, player identification. And we're seeing the fruits of that labour now. And Fabian Galtier has, has been really loyal to a core group of players, but he also hasn't been afraid to roll the dice and, and throw people in when he believes in a player. Louis Bierre-Bierre is, is a great example of that. So this is two teams reaching the culmination point of long-term plans and it's all going to come down to come to a head in 80 minutes of rugby in Paris and I cannot tell you how excited I am for this game yes I'm in Marseille for the quarterfinals I will I, I was in Paris last weekend I'll be there for the semi-finals and the final I wish I could be in two places at once it's just not physically possible so I'll be watching maybe like you will be um, this weekend I'll be watching the game uh, here in Marseille and when you look at the, the recent matchups between these sides, yes, France won here in Marseille last uh, tw uh, November, a year ago, wasn't it? Nearly a year ago. And, but, but when you actually look at the last three matchups between these two teams, uh, France won the last one, South Africa won the two before that. And the total points difference between the two sides in the last three meetings, eight points. There is so little separating these two teams. And when you look player for player, unit for unit, across the park, strength for strength, it's so hard to separate them. So when you look back at the pool stages, you obviously think, well, France are four from four. They're maybe better placed. But then one thing that's important to remember is their opening night game, which is over a month ago now, a month and two days ago, was, as I record this, was against New Zealand. And since then, they've had basically a procession in their pool. The only other match that they thought was going to be tough was, was Italy, and they dispatched them comfortably, embarrassingly from, from, from Italy's perspective. So France have come through unscathed. They've looked really good. They've got their attacking shape in place, but have they been battle-hardened? That's something when you flip over to South Africa. Yes, they've lost the game to Ireland, but they are battle-hardened and battle-ready. That performance against Scotland was exceptional. I thought South Africa were really good against Ireland and, and it puts into context how good South Africa are when you see how easily I Ireland dispatched Scotland. 
and on another day South Africa will feel like they would have come out of that Ireland game with a win. They left lots of points out there on the field, they tried some things and tinkered a little bit and they'll be stronger and better for it and I think psychologically they'll fancy themselves in a final against Ireland and of course now they have Andre Pollard and Lacanio Am, two World Cup winners, two exceptional rugby players who whether they're operating from the bench or in a starting team or just part of the wider training group as may be the case for Lacanio Am, we'll wait and see when the team's announced, um, that's some stardust that can make a difference. The Pollard one's particularly interesting, isn't it? I mean, what would you do? Bench, start? It's a really tough call, that. I think, personally, I think, I, I love the guy, and, and I think he doesn't get enough credit for his attacking play. Um, I think he can s set the, this back line on fire. And I expect it to be relatively tight, and I think Andre Pollard is, is the man that can he can unpick a defence, but he can also control and get his team in the right parts of the field. And I think South Africa winning is going to be based on uh, line-out, mall, tight game. That's, that's where they've got the edge. And I think Andre Pollard will put his team in the right area. And then Marnie Libok, when the game breaks up a little bit after 60 minutes, then Marnie Libok can go and do his thing. I do think South Africa have to be in front to win this game. I think France are a team that are capable of chasing the, chasing the game. I'm not as convinced by South Africa's ability to, to break it up and chase the game, which is why I actually think Marnie Leboc on the bench would be a better idea and Andre Pollard maybe to build the scoreboard 3-6, 9-12, etc. But styles make the matchups, And I mean, it's easy, it, just, to, just to describe this as flair versus brute force is a bit too simplistic because France have got some gnarly customers. Awini Antonio, Cyril Bai, they've got a massive job to do. Piato Malvaca, um, and equally, South Africa have got bags of flair when they want to use it. But I, I do think there's one player that France are going to miss in this game massively. And we'll talk about Dupont in a second, but Paul Villemza, ironically, South African born and bred. I just don't know if without him they aren't going to struggle in that front five. Cameron Wokey, Thibaut Flamont, class players. They're slightly better, they work as their best as that sort of loose headlock in the wider channels, getting hands free, running into open spaces. They're going to need just some bulk and heft to, uh, to just bash people in the middle. Talfa Fenua does that in a half an hour burst off the bench. Both benches are going to be absolutely stacked. Can France match that physicality in the first 50? That's going to be a massive challenge for them. I think they've got it in them, but South Africa are going to go after them massively. The breakdown is going to be huge. Obviously France, to get their attacking shapes going, they need quick ball. They've had that in the game so far. South Africa, that's, that's a different proposition. They are going to fly at the breakdown. The, 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 the management of the referee and the referee's interpretation of the breakdown is going to be absolutely huge there. Um, I mean, it's going to be fierce. It's going to be absolutely brutal in, in, in a similar way to the way that Ireland South Africa was just huge. On Antoine Dupont, so Ronan O'Gara described him as a player that's worth 10 points on his own. I don't think that's too unrealistic actually which is why him being back in training is such a massive boost and when you weigh up Andre Pollard, Lacanio Am um, and Dupont on the French side I think, I, think, I think it's a bigger boost for France than even it is for South Africa to have those players available. The thing is what do you do with Dupont as well? It's only a couple of weeks since he's played but he broke his cheekbone, he's had a bit of metal put in his face and you know what South Africa are going to do. They're going to do what any team would do, but they're going to do it better than anyone else. They're going to go after Dupont, try and get on him. Problem is, lots of teams try that. Oh, let's shut down Dupont. It's easier said than done, isn't it? But they are just going to go at him and try and rattle him. I do wonder, there's a little bit of me that wonders whether the best move might be to have Dupont on the bench. Because if you started him and then had to withdraw him, that would feel like a real negative deflation. Whereas, can, imagine, can you imagine the noise in Paris when Antoine Dupont, on like 45 minutes, stands up on the touchline, pulls off his vest and, and stands on, on the side? The energy that will give to that whole crowd will be immense. So, I don't know. It's really interesting to see what he does uh, in terms of selection. I suspect if Dupont's available, you start him and you can't really argue with that. 
It's so hard to call. It's so hard to call. Uh, and I've gone one way and I've gone the other. I mean, so many of the strengths cancel each other out. Even even players missing cancel each other out. Marchand and, and Marks, two incredible hookers that they're both missing. I, I don't know. France will take their opportunities. They will. My gut feeling just says South Africa, but then the home crowd factor. Oh, it's going to be incredible. Let's wait until the teams are out. We'll do a comparison on the teams, and then uh, and then I will pin my colours to the mask. F feel free to do do the same with you right now. Who's winning and why? And where's the balance of power? And where's the key battlegrounds in this fixture? And um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. And as I say, on, on the other videos I'll do around the quarterfinals, I will reveal bit by bit why and how I'm here and where I'm staying, which is just there. Yeah, spoiler alert, I'm not in the van. Right, see you on the next one.